Hi there, this is Love Johar. Thank you so much for watching this channel and thank you so much for tuning into this video. So, as you know that we are discussing the new standard clauses one by one. We have already discussed 4.1 and 4.2 in the previous videos. If you have not watched, I would highly recommend you to go through those videos. And uh, we have already covered under context of the organization, understanding the organization and its context in 4.1 and understanding the needs and expectations of interested parties. So we have already seen what are these interested parties, who are these parties. We have also seen what are the different internal and external issues that you must be aware of, okay? So I hope that you have got some clarity. Still, if you have any doubts, feel free to ask in the Telegram group that I've already provided in the description of this video as well, okay? So now here in this particular video, let us try to understand 4.3 and 4.4. Here we will talk about scope of the ISMS, which is a very important, uh, you know, uh, document, the scope of the ISMS. Uh, again, if you need any help uh, with the templates of scope template or anything uh, of that matter, uh, feel free to ask in the Telegram group. So 4.3, determining the scope of the information security management system. Here it says the organization shall determine the boundaries and applicability of the information security management system to establish its scope. Okay. So it is talking about determining the boundaries. Why it is talking about determining the boundaries? Let's say an organization has uh, 10 different locations, uh, geographic locations. So it is not always a case where they will be implementing the ISMS in all those 10 locations. It could be a case they only have to implement ISMS in one of their particular locations in a particular geographic area. So you have to establish a boundary and applicability where your ISMS will be applicable in order to establish the scope. Also, sometimes the ISMS is not implemented across the organization. In certain departments, they are not a part of the scope. So how will you define the scope? That is where determining the scope of ISMS is very important, guys. So I have already created many videos on scope creation and what is the importance of scope. So here I will not go into much detail. I have already provided the links to the videos in the description section. So you can watch those videos if you want to know how to create the scope document, etc. But what is important in the new in the new uh, in the new standard is it is giving us some parameters it is saying when determining the scope the organization shall consider number one the external and internal issues that we have already discussed in the last video if you have not watched you should watch the video second is the requirements referred to in 4.2 what are the requirements what are your requirements why you are implementing ISMS okay this is your information security objectives that I haven't touched upon yet, but still I will be touching upon in the upcoming clauses. I will make sure I will help you understand what are these objectives uh, that you define in uh, your ISMS implementation. This is where it is referring to the requirements. The third is interfaces and dependencies between activities performed by the organization and those that are performed by other organizations. This is very important, guys. Try to understand this third part. I already covered in the uh, in the other videos as well but still wanted to make sure that i give you some more clarity here interfaces and dependencies means what are the processes what are the activities what are the tasks uh, which are interrelated between your organization and other organization it is clearly saying that it is going between your organization and some external organizations these could be your suppliers these could be your supply chain vendors these could be your third party vendors okay here you need to understand how your scope is getting affected with these activities and how will you define the interfaces between the organization and these external parties and the dependencies what kind of dependencies do you have okay and these are very important from establishing a scope point of view so scope again as you know is a mandatory document so it should be available as a documented information this is what is covered in 4.3 section of this new clause in 4.4 it says information security management system here it says the organization shall establish implement maintain and continually improve an information security management system including the processes needed and their interactions 
in accordance with the requirements of this document so here is it is talking about creating an ISMS uh, manual or as or an ISMS uh, document where you define how you will establish how will you, you will implement how you will maintain and how you will continually improve your ISMS including the processes that you will be performing within the ISMS okay this is 4.4 that I am discussing about here so this is the two clauses that I wanted to discuss in this particular video uh, still if you have any doubts if you wanted to ask any more questions feel free to ask in the telegram group that I have already created and many people are asking questions over there so I am sure you will get the most out of it so uh, thank you so much for watching. This is what I wanted to cover. Stay tuned because I will be covering covering all the clauses here one by one. And also after the clauses, I will also go to controls. What are the different controls? We will also see all the controls in detail. Okay, control study is very important. So make sure you stay tuned and watch these videos. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you. Bye-bye.